Welcome back, life travelers, to another video by Ricardo's Travels. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. This video is going to be about how to find parks that are open, which parks are closed, how to find meat or meat replacements. You know, how do you get your protein? Everything's out. How do you find the toilet paper, the paper towel? How about uh, how to sanitize? You've gone to all the store and they're out of the alcohol, so they're out of the sanitizers, they're out of the toilet paper, the paper towel, the meats. What do you do? I've got your answers. Stay tuned. All I want is for you to be happy. Well, give me a chance to show that you can be. Well, open your eyes and see the way I see. Cause all I want is for you to be happy with me.
Okay guys, welcome back. And of course, as soon as I hit record, the planes come overhead. Let's let that thing go by for a minute. And I'll just enjoy this fantastic lake and forest. We have a light rain, drizzle. It's in the low 70s, got a overcast. I'm here at a lake with a slight breeze. Everything's greening up. It's just beautiful. Got a few flowers and plants blooming. I'll roll those in here. There we go. That plane's about gone now, so hopefully you can hear me. So, as promised, this video is going to be about how RVers and travelers can find where they can camp, what parks are open, which are closed, how to find supplies, how to replace supplies, such as meats. You go to the stores, there's no meat. There's no toilet paper, paper towel, sanitizers. What are you supposed to do? Well, what you do is you replace them. And I'm about to show you how to replace them. And you might have to substitute them. Now, you know, you might not get exactly what you want, but I've got some replacements and I shared that in my last couple of videos too or at least in my last one maybe my last two uh, been quite busy lately but ways you can replace your meat your toilet paper your paper towel your your cleaners sterilizers and of course all this stuff that the links are going to be down below like always so you can order it from Amazon Hopefully you're going to stay put for a week or so, so you can get a delivery. Uh, and of course, if you order small items, remember there's the Amazon boxes or lock boxes uh, that you can get. But before I go into exactly how you're going to replace them and what it is, let me just ask everybody, whether you're in a sticks and bricks, whether you're in an RV, whether you're in a van, traveling, RVing, camping, whatever. I need everybody to comment below what you can do and what you need and roughly where you are or generally where you are, right? So, you know, North Atlanta, East Dallas, uh, South Fort Worth, uh, you know, West Houston, uh, West Phoenix, whatever, just generally where you are. For security, don't say exactly where you are in your comments. Uh, but let's help each other out. So if, if you need toilet paper, please comment. Say, I need a couple rolls of toilet paper. I'm in, you know, I, I got three kids. I got whatever. You, you know, put in what it is, what you need. A little bit of a story. You know, what you can do, where you can meet somebody. See if we can meet up. See if we can help each other as a community. And remember... In these crazy times, this too shall pass. I would be willing to bet next year, for sure, this is going to be over, but next year you're going to look back and just say, what was all the hype about? It's, and a lot of us won't hardly remember the event other than the hard times that, that we had. So let's keep our head about us, stay safe, help each other as a community, and, and you know, weather this storm. Okay, so now I'll roll in how you can get your meats, your toilet paper, your paper towel, your cleaners, all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. So as we all know, folks are being asked to leave parks all over the country. Parks are being closed all over the country for various reasons. Uh, restrooms are being closed. State parks are being closed. Uh, folks aren't taking money anymore. So what are people supposed to do? Well, I have a few ideas for you. And I like the free 
options. So that's what I'm going to cover. There's all kinds of ways to do it. And depending on your situation, one may work for you and the other one may not. So first of all, for park closings, always, now or anytime, the best option for you is to call or go to their website to get the updated information, whether you got reservations or not. And third, Campentium.com is providing a running list, an updated daily list of all the state and national park closures, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, the military campgrounds, a lot of good information on there. And I'm going to give you a link to that in the description below this video. Now, before I share with you the ways to get free or find free camping, let me offer a word of caution for everyone to continue following the codes, the laws. Don't get caught parking where you shouldn't, where it's unlawful, because even though in some places they're releasing prisoners from jails, they're not arresting or taking people they arrest for misdemeanors to jail because of manpower and resources, I guarantee you they will have the manpower and resources to enforce parking codes and make criminals out of RVers. So be forewarned. Follow the law. Make sure it's legal to park where you're parking, where you're camping, where you're staying. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on to the fun stuff. How to find free places to stay. To camp, to boondock, to mooch dock, to driveway dock. All kinds of docking. So our first way is people you already know and know you. That's your family, friends, and our RV community. If you're a YouTuber, of course, your YouTube viewers and Patreon members. Just make sure you know the code for that area. There's only one person responsible for you, and that's you. Don't put your family and friends in jeopardy by bringing the law to their house because you're parked there. Now, finally, how to find free places to stay. The first resource is going to be the freecampsites.net. It's a fantastic website to go to. It's free. And the website is quite a powerful tool. It gives you a lot of information. So if you have any trouble, check in the description below. I'll have a link over to a fellow YouTuber, David and Jenny, over there at Fate Unbound. Jenny did a fabulous how-to video on the freecampsites.net and they actually use it a lot so check that link out check their video out and their channel out they got a lot of good information over there and keep checking back on my channel for a how-to video on the freecampsites.net i just don't have one yet so for now you guys can go over there and check out jenny's video now the next free campsites resource is campendium.com it's a, another very good resource for you and it covers RV parks, free camping sites, national parks, uh, national forests, state parks, and other free locations. So check that one out as well. And let me suggest, regardless which resource you use, whether it's freecampsites.net or compendium.com or any other one, you should always check Google Maps to verify the area, to look at the types of roads, does it have trees, not trees, if you need solar or you want shade, you can see what kind of trees it's got. So regardless what any of these reviews or any of these sites say, use Google Maps to verify it before you go there. Now I have a couple honorable mentions for you and the places to stay. Now these aren't free, but they are very low cost. The first low-cost resource for places to stay is Boondockers Welcome. It's a nationwide platform where like-minded travelers that 
live in sticks and bricks or has farms or just a plot of land allows travelers to stay at their location. It might be a driveway. It might be a huge ranch. It might be a farm. Each, each one is different. The host decides what size of vehicle and what they can offer. They don't have to offer anything, just a place to stay. But a lot of them offer power and water and dump and Wi-Fi. And a lot of them are travel-minded, just like RVers. Or in fact, a lot of them are RVers that travel a lot of the time and let other RVs stay there. So when you show up there, a lot of times they become a tour guide for the area. So they're a huge help, a huge blessing in this time. So that's another resource that a lot of people don't think of. So Boondockers Welcome is $50 a year for the membership. Although you don't have to pay for power, or at least it's not required. Uh, if you want to leave $5, $10, $15, whatever, depending on how long you stay there, that's up to you. And I would actually suggest that, especially if you're staying there three, four, or five days at a time. Although, other than that, there's no other fee. Just $50 a year, and you can stay at all these host places for free. And unlike some of the other platforms, these hosts or these members have actually contacted the host company to send out an email to all the RVers, all the members, to say, hey, we're, we're still offering places to stay, even for those under quarantine. So a lot of them, they're not scared off. They're not overreacting to this COVID-19 situation. They're saying, come on. So check them out. So take advantage of boondockerswelcome.com. The next low-cost camping resource is Hip Camp. Hip Camp is a free membership, but the hosts charge. So it's going to be anywhere from $15 to $150. So there's some high-end sites on there, and then, again, some folks that's just offering their driveway or their ranch or their farm or their field or whatever, you know, for a few bucks. So it's a broad range on there. But, yeah, you can find places for 25 and less, just bunches of them. Okay, my last low-cost resource for places to stay is harvesthosts.com. Now, Harvest Host, it's free to stay at all these different locations, these wineries and golf courses and other businesses. And Harvest Host runs 79 for the basic membership and 99 for the full membership, including the golf courses. So if you're a full-time traveler, that might be worth it. Although right now, with everything shutting down and travel limitations and things like that it's really going to depend on what part of the country you are in whether that's going to be a good option for you or not now let's get into how to find all those hard to find items and of course next to the toilet paper and paper towel it's the meats milk and eggs that seems the hardest to find so let's start off with the meat, and we'll just go down the list one by one. Okay, so some good tips on helping you find items in the store. If you're already in the store that you usually go to, and you're not finding what you want in that section, is to look in other sections you would not usually expect to find them or usually look in such as your camping section or your health food section or automotive or canned goods section, uh, baby food section. And then, of course, as I'll cover in this video, a, a good substitute for meat is vegan or vegetarian section. Uh, and I've got some good ones for you, so, so, so don't 
turn off yet. This this is <laughs> this is going to be some excellent information. You're going to be surprised, and and you, you're just going to love it. So, anyway, <laughs> now let's get to the exact meat replacements. Where's the meat? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do you find meat or substitute meat? So if you look in the camping section, you're going to find the freeze-dried camping complete meals. And of course, yes, it, it depends on why you're wanting the meat. Are you just wanting to find a source of protein? Or are you looking at the meat because that's what you like to eat? So it's really going to depend on your preference on these different options but yeah if, if you're looking for the meat and you gotta have some meat look in the camping section as well as the health food section and of course the canned goods section because remember they have canned meats so check out the canned food section as well as the baby food section they have some over there as well and the Asian or Mexican Latino section is a good source and the prices are often better over there than in other sections of the store and then finally there's the vegan vegetarian section they have lots of stuff over there a lot of variety now before I forget in terms of protein intake if that's why you're wanting meat remember there's all kinds of nuts you know the peanuts seeds beans, you know, the, the lentils, milk, as well as all the vegan products. So don't forget those beans and nuts. And in the health food section, remember they got all kinds of protein drinks and protein bars. So, so that's another excellent option for you. Now, remember all these items that I'm giving you suggestions on, on how to find them and how to get your protein can all be ordered online and shipped to you. And of course, as always, I'll have the links down in the description of this video so you can order them directly off my Amazon affiliate page and have it shipped straight to you. So I would like to briefly, for those that aren't familiar with the vegan vegetarian products, I want to make you aware that there are good and bad vegan products just like there are good and bad restaurants out there so not all vegan products is fantastic but there are several that are really good and some that if I did not tell you it was not meat you would not know it and you will love it so these are the ones that I'm gonna share with you real quick here so you can get ones to replace your meat temporarily or maybe long term because this is healthier there, there's no cholesterol in all this stuff so this is items I buy all the time and as I've shared with you in my other videos you know I'm from Texas I grew up with barbecue I'm a meat lover so when I say these are good this is coming from a barbecue meat lover alrighty okay let, let's get started okay so first up on our list is the Beyond Meat Company they make replacements for just about any type or cut of meat out there that you want they make sausages they make sandwich meat cold cuts chicken fish hamburger hamburger patties beef tips so you name it and they probably got it now Speaking of products that a meat lover would not know was not meat, is their links or their sausage links. So if you're a meat lover that loves brat links, bratwurst links, or Italian sausage links, you will not believe these links by Beyond Meat. Everything from their smell as you cook them, their skin, the texture inside, their flavor, how it feels when you cut them, everything, you will swear it's meat. So get these if you're looking for a meat replacement. They're beyond sausage brats and Italian sausages. 
Okay, next I've got the Gardein company or Gardein brand. And one of the best ones they have is this fish fillet. Again, you will not believe this is not fish. The texture, the taste, the smell, the crust, everything. It's like having a fish fry. That is definitely one of my favorite. And I grew up with chicken fried steak. So these little breaded turkey cutlets remind me of chicken fried steak with some fries or mashed potatoes. Outstanding. And then if you want, you know, chicken strips, uh, fish sticks or, or fish fingers, chicken fingers, these are wonderful too. And then if you just want to toss in a t salad or just have a light meal, you have those chicken strips. And then, of course, you got the barbecue wings. And yes, they have the beefless grounds. It's like ground beef that you can use for tacos and chili and all that kind of stuff. So definitely check out that Gardein brand. And this isn't all of them. This is just some of my favorites, but they just got tons of all kinds of different products. Now, remember all these items that I'm giving you suggestions on, on how to find them and how to get your protein can all be ordered online and shipped to you. And of course, as always, I'll have the links down in the description of this video so you can order them directly off my Amazon affiliate page and have it shipped straight to you. Oh, wow. I just looked at the time. Sorry about making another long video. I just feel like I had a lot of good information for you. <laughs> It just seems like I can't make short videos, but, but hopefully you're enjoying it. Hopefully it's helpful. So I'll try to get through the rest of this just as fast as I can. Uh, and you can just pause the screen if you've missed something. So our, our next hard-to-find item is, of course, the milk. So milk, again, check in the other sections because a lot of milk can be found like in, in the uh, baby food section, in the camping section, you can find dried milk. And over there in the can section, there's dried and condensed milk over there in, in the baking or cooking section. So check those other sections as well. And, of course, the vegan section again, because uh, there's vegan milk, all different kinds, plain vegan milk. Uh, nut milk, sweet milk, almond milk, all kinds of different vegan milks. So, so if you need milk for your s cereal or coffee or something like that, check the vegan section as well. Okay, the next item I've got is the eggs. So eggs is pretty much like finding the, the milk and the meats. You check in these other sections, like the camping section, The you know they got all kinds of freeze-dried, dehydrated breakfast with eggs in it. Uh, the canned goods section and the baby food section has all kinds of canned eggs, dried eggs, all that kind of thing. Uh, and again, of course, check the vegan section as well. Next, we have the ever-popular toilet paper and paper towels. Now, if you go to the baby food section, of course, they've got wipes over there so that you can use in place of paper towels. They have some, sometimes they have them in the camping section. Also, the automotive section. So just the, the shop towels and things they've got over there in the automotive section can substitute paper towels. You can also substitute with rags, bags of rags, just, you know, like T-shirt type material. And you can get large bags of rags from your big box hardware store, really cheap. So you can use these rags, cut them up. Each rag probably will make four, six, or eight toilet paper pieces. Although I do want to say, because I've seen this in the news, don't put these rags down the toilet. Most RVers are responsible. They're not going to do that anyway. Although I thought I would mention it because, well, in an RV, the toilet system just dumps right into the black tank. So it's just your RV you're messing up because it'll go into your, your black tank or your gray tank. Well, it goes into a black tank. <laughs> but it'll stop it up. 
and then you have a very expensive repair. So please don't do that in the RV, and please don't throw these rags down the toilet of a rest area or in your home if you're in a sticks and bricks, because uh, it will stop up your plumbing, and it creates a huge problem for the community at large because it starts stopping up the sewage system. So please, please, please don't throw these rags down the toilet. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on to how to find the bread. So, of course, just like all the other products, look in the other sections. Uh, specifically for the bread is your baking section. Because remember, they have all kinds of mixes over there that you can just add water and put in a pan. A lot of times you, you can make skillet bread. Uh, you don't have to have an oven. But if you do, that's great. They, they've got all kinds of pre-mixes over there if you're not familiar with how to make your bread from scratch. Uh, also in the health food section, you'll find some. And in the Asian and Mexican Latino sections, they have some over there. And one of your best options is just ordering it off Amazon. So Amazon has bread that you can order and mixes that you can order. So if the store is out or doesn't have what you would like, again, check out my links below the description or below the video in the description. And I've got links for the bread and links for the mixes that you just add water, pour in a pan, on a skillet, whatever, put on top of the stove or a fire. And you can make pan bread, skillet bread, flat bread. And check out my video on my can pizza as well homemade pizza with flour you remember that stuff that white stuff that comes in a bag <laughs> so i've got a video on that and that same recipe can make bread so all you got to do is buy the uh ingredients and you can make you know pan bread you can make flat bread you can make uh pizza bread so there are just all kinds of ways to Find your bread, substitute your bread, or make your own bread. Okay, up next is our cooking oils. And again, look in the different sections, uh, particularly the camping section, health food section. Uh, but also, a section most do not even think about is the vegan vegetarian section. Because they have all kinds of oils over there that are plant-based, such as the Luan coconut oil and no this oil does not taste like coconut it, it's it's pretty much like Crisco so it does not taste like coconut at all there's no taste to it so you can cook with this they have another one that's for high heat if you can do a high frying or something like that but I use this oil for all pan frying just about anything I, I use this for and they also have the spray. So if you want the Pam, like you just, you just want to spray the cooking pan that you're baking in or cooking in, they have that as well. And the high heat ones are the ones that have uh, organic. Sometimes it's called virgin or organic virgin or processed or rather unprocessed. That's the one that tastes like coconut. So if it says organic, it's going to taste like coconut. And that's fine if you are wanting, you know, coconut shrimp. <laughs> so if you get those vegan chicken fingers that I'd showed before and pan fry them in this, it will taste just like that. Coconut shrimp. So there you go. And, of course, you can order all this stuff from Amazon and have it shipped straight to you. Okay, for these next three, I'm just going to lump them all together. The disinfectants, the hand sanitizers, and the cleaners. Although I am going to separate them into four groups. The hard services, the fabrics, personal care, and the air. So hard surfaces is like your tables, cutting boards. Uh, your fabrics are going to be like your clothing, furniture, your curtains, and then... Of course, the personal is skin care. Anything that you're going to touch or touch your skin 
or consume, and then of course the air itself, which is where I'm going to start. So cleaning the air, and you'll have to check out my video on this. I have a video on the ozone generator, and it will actually disinfect your air and all of your surfaces, including the subsurfaces. The ozone generator will kill all viruses, bacteria, uh, pathogens in the air, uh, mold, mites, bed bugs, and you just set it and run it for about 15 to 30 minutes per day, per room, or per RV. And that's it, other than cleaning the high traffic areas like knobs, the toilet plunger, the refrigerator handle, places you touch all the time, multiple times a day. Now, if the store has them, of course, the sprays, the Clorox spray, the Lysol sprays, those are great for clean in the air and then it settles down onto the surface that you sprayed over that. So, so that's another good air cleaner as well as a good fabric cleaner. So you spray it you know, on your furniture, on your curtains, and I even keep a can uh, right in my vehicle. So when I, if I go in a store or something and come right back out, I'll actually douse my hands with it and, and rub my hands down thoroughly with it. Uh, if I don't have any type of hand sanitizer with me. Okay, well, I got a little bit ahead of myself, but just like all products, to find them, look in the different areas, such as the camping section, the baby food section. They got cleaners over there, as well as the health and beauty section. And, yes, the vegetable and fruit section, because you can actually take lemons and limes, and mix them with white vinegar and distilled water and make a cleaner, a disinfectant cleaner. So yeah, don't overlook that. Lemons and limes, white vinegar and water. And of course you would put it in a spray bottle so then you could spray the air, spray your hands, spray the hard surface that you're trying to clean just like you would with any of the traditional cleaners. And finally, to wrap up this disinfectants, hand sanitizers, and cleaners section here, I'm just going to roll in some lists of alternative methods of cleaning or making cleaners and disinfectants for the different types of surfaces. And if you're interested in any of them, you can just pause the screen and look at it. So for hard surfaces, one of the most common is using bleach which is readily available almost anywhere, and most people already have some. So bleach with a quarter to a half teaspoon per cup of distilled water. And let me say, when I say distilled water, that's just best to use. If you just have tapped water, bottled water, that's fine. You can use that. It's just distilled. just makes it better. You don't have to worry about any kind of contaminants or anything like that. But, you know, just plain water is fine. So second one is the lemon and lime, about two to three lemons or limes, depending on their size, with uh, white vinegar. And again, distilled water. Uh, you can use it to wipe things down, clean things, uh, put it in a spray bottle and spray with it. So that's another good option for hard surfaces. Uh, denatured alcohol. Uh, because it's not oil-based. Other types of alcohol is oil-based, so I would not use that. I'd use denatured alcohol. Uh, essential oils is another good one, and there's all kinds of those. The peppermints, the rosemary, the lavenders. So, so it smells good, and it's also uh, disinfectant, antibacterial, all that good stuff. And then there's the cloves. You just get dried cloves and soak them in distilled water or plain water, your choice, you know, overnight or for two or three days. And it will give off its, its disinfecting properties into the water. And you can use that for hard surfaces uh, to clean yourself uh, or to drink it even or use it as a mouthwash. So all kinds of good things, like clove water. And it makes a great tea as well, by the way, with a little lemon juice in it. The next one is UV light. 
you know, just sunlight. It's a, it sterilizes. So yeah, sunlight sterilizes. So you can just set things outside that you want to, you know, disinfect. And the sunlight will, over time, all day long, it, it will disinfect them. So that's a good way to disinfect your clothes. Now, the last one is lye soap, if you can get a hold of it. Of course, you can order it offline. But lye soap and distilled water is another excellent disinfectant for cleaning hard surfaces. Now, for fabrics, that's fabrics on your furniture, your carpets, your rugs, your clothing, curtains, that tap thing. And it's really the same cleaners as on the hard surfaces, with two exceptions. One, I would try these on an inconspicuous place, you know, so you can test it on the material first. That way, if it does discolor it or stain it, uh, you'll know without destroying the whole material. The second is to use distilled water to prevent that from happening, because distilled water doesn't have minerals and such in it that other water does. And if you find it does discolor it or stain it, you might try a weaker or more diluted form, meaning more water. And as far as disinfecting your skin, it's almost the same list, except I would not use bleach on your skin. So, of course, the lemon and lime, the vinegar, that's not going to hurt you, the denatured alcohol, uh, the essential oils, clove water, clove water you can even drink. And, yeah, UV light, get out, get some sunlight. It can decontaminate, disinfect your skin, and help you to absorb vitamin D, which is great. And, of course, light soap for cleaning. Uh, now, let me say with this with a disclaimer, a lot of these will disinfect, but they could dry your skin out. So if you use too much essential oils, if you use too much denatured alcohol, or you use it too often, you might have to disinfect with this and then go back with some distilled water or maybe some uh, coconut oil to moisturize your skin. Although these will all safely disinfect your skin. So, let me wrap this up by making you aware of surfaces that are often overlooked. And they are some of the nastiest surfaces you can think of. And that being your cell phone, your tablets, your computer, mouse, and keyboard, various buttons for your HVAC or your air conditioning, heater system, your stereo, microwave, uh, system monitors, whether it's for your, for your tanks, for your batteries, for your solar containers, such as your ketchup, mustard, spice bottles, etc. that's out everywhere. Switches, switches to your overhead fans, your light switches, and the surrounding area around the light switches, because we always know generally where the light switch is, right? So we'll sort of just swipe at it with our hand and just get around the light. So you need to get around the light, not just the light switch itself. And then, of course, handles to the common places like your refrigerator, your exit door inside and out, your uh, overhead fans. And then, of course, what most people forget about <laughs> is the tow vehicle, if, if you got a tow vehicle. And that's the handles of your tow vehicle, of the doors, the steering wheel, the stereo knobs, the door itself inside where your arm and hand are going to be resting. So you make sure you disinfect your tow vehicle as well as your trailer or RV. Now, if you found any of this information helpful, please comment and like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, may everyone have safe and happy travels wherever life leads you. Chance to show that you can be. We'll open your